Euroleague season is right around the corner and the reigning champions barely have changed their roster. Out of their main winning core, only the center Shan Li is missing. And Anadolu Efes managed to keep their two most important pieces. Guards Shane Larkin and Vasilya Micic. With Ergin Ataman still leading the way on the sidelines, we can be pretty sure that their key offensive set plays will not change at all. So to get ready for the upcoming season, let's break down which Ataman set plays let Micic and Larkin shine, thus bringing the championship to Istanbul. To start, let's be clear about one thing. There is so much talent and so many shooters on this team that hard and long schemes are not necessary at all. Ataman implemented the simple and most classic entrances to couple situations that occur over and over again. Remember these two concepts. Spread pick and roll which you see right here, where the screen happens in the middle and other players are spaced out like this. The other final situation is 4 corner pick and roll, where the screen happens on a 45 degree angle and players are spaced out in this rectangle shape. There are a couple of different set plays to arrive at these points, but the final idea is usually one or the other. Also, whenever there is chaos on the court, Micic or Larkin can just take the ball and all the team knows what to do. In a matter of moments, everyone is spaced out perfectly because the last piece of the puzzle is always the ball handler. He decides if he wants to play the pick and roll in the middle or in the corner. Great spacing was a major key to winning the championship last year. And now that we know that, we can get into the details about the set plays. Their number one entrance to spread pick and roll is the classic zipper action. They love to start the game with this play for Kruno Simon. Zipper is this vertical cut with a screen from Moerman. Simon receives the ball and immediately plays spread pick and roll. The beauty of this play lies in its details. When the screen happens, Shengeli is on the weak side and is the low man. He is responsible for helping if Shan Li rolls fast. This is exactly what happens, but at the same time, Moerman is lifting up. This triggers a problem. Another movement changes the low man. Technically, it is Kurbanov now, who is defending Micic, but he doesn't realize it it's since everything happens so fast. Shingeli is pointing the finger for help, but nobody arrives and Anadolu scores. The same happens here. Anadolu perimeter players are so good that they usually attract aggressive defenses and when the help side is not ready, it often results in easy points. You can see how good they are in these next clips where they punish defenses for not being close enough or beating step outs with the speed easily and creating open shots for their teammates. There is one little trick on the zipper cut action. If the defender tries to cheat, like Williams here, by cutting the screen because he is trying to not lose distance from his defender, Kruno Simon likes to just pop back to the corner for an open free. Top players always follow what their opponents are doing and this is an easy trick to punish the cheaters. If you are too close and try to deny this entry pass after the zipper cut, Anadolu players find a way to punish it too. Dunstan smartly sets a back screen which Valencia don't expect and Simon finds himself open under the basket with a much smaller guard. There is also a longer version of this action. When you see the zipper screen made by the center and the pick and roll being played with the four men, Anadolu quickly flows into another spread pick and roll. Playmaker lifts, receives the ball and you have the same formation again. Since Fenerbahce switches here, Micic goes to work one-on-one. -on -one. He finds an open teammate, in a closeout situation and makes half of the work for him. Here they play the longer version again, but Micic is denied up top. The strength of Anadolu is knowing how to keep the offense flowing. Larkin quickly takes the place of Micic himself and plays the same spread pick and roll. Valencia have to help strongly in the paint and Simon has no problem beating this closeout. The second most used entry is from Horns, arguably the most used starting spacing in basketball. Two players up top, two in the corners and playmaker always goes to the side of four. He then receives a flare screen from the center and after that the center arrives to set the pick. Now this is a classic four corner pick and roll that we were talking about before. Why does it work? If you defend hard on the player with the ball, and you have to since it's Larkin or Micic usually, the question is who is helping on the roll man? It depends on each team's rules, but if it's the man from the two side, Micic has Simon in that corner. If it's the man from the single tag side, Larkin can just lift up closer and be open for a free. In any case, if you don't hedge well, it's a big versus a smaller guy under the basket and that's a foul or points in most situations. 
When Ataman wants to involve more speed before the pick and roll, Anadolu has another option from the same entry. The playmaker hands the ball to the guy in the corner and he attacks the pick with speed. Now here look how high Dunstan is alone. Neither one of Fenerbahce players who are in the corners want to go that high, but allowing this pass means a 4 on 3 situation. They rotate well, but Kyle O'Quinn just comes back to the paint not defending anyone and it means someone is wide open. After playing this option for a couple of times, smart coaches will try to steal some easy points the next time down. The guy defending in the corner expects his opponent running up and might be overplaying, so Beaubois fools him by quickly changing direction and scoring an easy two, since there is no one on the weak side to help. There is one more option from the horns, this time used more to free up the shooter. The center, instead of setting the flare for four men and then playing pick and roll, goes to set a wide pin down for the Frenchman. Again, nothing fancy, but with the same start, Prepelic here is not expecting it and is late to react. That's enough separation for Bourbois to get a shot off. When you have a center that is capable of hitting threes, that's when your offense is at full potential. And especially this scheme, which becomes even more unguardable. Lundberg defends this better than Prepelic, but Bolomboy still has to help him for a moment. Shanli is wide open and he shows why Barcelona signed him. Zipper cut and horns entries are most used and have different endings. Now let's look at other sets to get into spread or four corner pick and roll that leaves all the freedom for Micic and Larkin to create. The first one is when he receives these two screens from bigs to go up and receive the ball. After that, power forward spaces out to the corner and the center comes to set a middle pick. From here, it's all Shane or Vasilia, two masters of the craft just going to work ensuring their scoring, driving and creating for teammates' skills. If the first screen doesn't create advantages, Anadol just plays the re-screen and here we see the same situation as before. Dunstan short rolling until free throw line and triggering defensive rotations. It creates a closeout situation for Micic. If one on one he is hard to stop, on closeouts it's almost impossible. Here you see another similar set where Micic and Larkin have all the freedom to create. Four men receives the ball, the guard cuts the corner and the other guard gets a pin down screen to receive the ball. Center turns around and comes to play another spread pick and roll in the middle. Nothing fancy, nothing difficult, but Ataman has the players needed to just play off opponent's mistakes and his player's greatness. Shane and Basilia have the green light to call this action whenever they like. If they have made a bucket on the possession before, or they know that the other team is switching, they simply ask for a screen and then attack the mismatch. They are so dangerous at both shooting and reading the weak side defenses that this extremely simple action is good against any defense. You will almost never see long and fancy sets from Ataman. He has the utmost confidence in the most powerful guard combo in the Euroleague and it is paying off big time. The only thing his set plays do is give some kind of advantage before these two guys receive the ball. Here is a short set for Larkin where he receives a screen and then gets a handoff from the big guy. The opponent has to make a decision here. Following on handoff would mean Larkin going to the basket immediately but going under creates separation which after a pick becomes so big that Larkin is completely free for the shot. This entrance also creates another four corner pick and roll situation where other teams are trapping Larkin and he is feeding his teammates. Now let's see a similar scheme for Basilia. Princeton's offense entry where after passing the ball he receives a back screen and then does a circle around the painted area to receive it back. Because of this run, the primary defender is trailing every time, plus he starts playing pick and roll already in motion. And if nobody steps up, you can be sure he will pull the trigger from deep. Another thing this circle run does is that the defender is also on the move and it is much easier to fool him after receiving the ball back. Like here, where he just changes the direction smoothly and finishes around the rim. Now let's watch another example of this set and I invite you to look at the beautiful and constant movement of Anadolu for 24 seconds. Their offensive machine is oiled well and all the players know exactly where they have to cut, fill in and how to read the advantages. Valencia here tried to cheat by triple switching on the pick, but Anadolu quickly found an open shot. 
For their shooter, Rodrigue Boba, Ataman also has the most classic set of them all. Diamond entry where he can choose which way to go and which screen to use. If he doesn't find an open shot on the first screen, he can just pass it back and sprint to the other side using two screens and then evaluating the situation from there. Diamond set is a classic one and almost every coach in basketball that had a great shooter on their team has used it. It relies solely on the shooter's speed and the ability of fooling the defender with your movements. For an experienced player like Bourbois, it is more than enough. These are the most common schemes Anadolu have used last year. As you can see, there is nothing fancy and all Ataman does is give his best players freedom to create. His playbook's goal is just to give them a little bit of advantage and put all the other players in the right places on the court. Extreme guard talent, amazing big man shooting ability and Anadolu's perfect spacing is what makes their offense so unstoppable. So what do you guys think about Ataman's coaching and which team playbook would you like to see next? Let me know in the comments down below and don't forget to put a like on this video. See you next time.